First of all, tell people what BRRRR stands for. Yes, sir. So BRRRR is an acronym. And my definition of BRRRR is just a strategy that we use to acquire assets very rapidly with little to no money. So that's what it means. But the acronym in and in itself is the actual steps that we take. So BRRRR is a B with four R's. The B stands for buy. And the four R's stand for rehab, rent, refinance, and then, of course, repeat. And that's really what I love about this strategy is, again, it allows us to acquire assets with little to no money very rapidly. But it's one of these things that you can actually scale up very, very quickly. Um, so some people refer to it as the Burrs method, which is just replacing one of the R's with an S. And instead of saying repeat at the end, they say scale. It's essentially the same exact thing. Um, I didn't invent or create the Burr method, but I have been a huge fan of it for the last five or six years. And I have been focused my, my time and efforts uh, primarily on this method for the last three and a half years. And we've done about 200 individual Burr deals to date. And um, my portfolio is averaging $1,200 per asset added. And if you calculate in the fact that these assets pay me to own them, they cash flow, after three to five months, I don't have any money invested in the property after the, a couple months, right? Because again, I have to typically on average leave $1,200 in a property. Now, sometimes that may be four or 5,000. Sometimes it's zero and that's the goal, always zero. Sometimes I can actually walk with a couple thousand like I did this morning. So, so the, now that check that you just walked with, that's the next to the last R, which is the refinancing of that property, right? Yeah. So, so the check that you showed earlier, I got one just like that three and a half months ago when I bought this particular property, I borrowed the purchase and that went straight across the title company to the seller. They locked out of that, out of that office with that money. But I also borrowed the rehab and 10,000 more, just like you did in that scenario. So three, three and a half months ago, when I bought this property, I walked out of there with, I'm, I'm going to throw out a number here, about 40 grand. It might have been a thousand or two less, give or take exactly, but it was about 40,000. And I knew that my rehab was going to be about 30,000. So I basically had padded the rehab in case we went over. And also added in the additional, you know, amount of money to cover the things like the interest and the closing and the utilities and the title fees and the insurance and all that type of stuff. So, so what I did this morning was actually pay back my lender for the purchase, for the rehab and all of that interest. And I paid the title company and I was able to do this transaction and walk with a little bit of money. But here's the coolest part, Jay. I now have an asset that's got 30 grand worth of rehab renovation update. However you want to look at it. Those are all the same things in my mind, but they may be different things to different people. But we put in, a, put a brand new roof on this house. We put in new windows. We put in a brand new HVAC. We did a little bit of plumbing work. Um, we put in new flooring throughout in a new kitchen and two new bathrooms. So all of the capital expenditures on this property should be handled for the next five to seven years, maybe 10, right? So that's the best part about this method. Being able to acquire an asset with little to no money, that's really cool to the newbie. They're like, oh, that's amazing. But you know what's really cool to the professionals like you and me? It's adding properties to our portfolio that are rehabbed. We're not buying properties that are just kind of okay. Everything is new in these properties. And that's also what makes this strategy work so well, Jay, because of course we're using OPM, other people's money to get positioned in here. But part of this process is rehabbing. And by rehabbing it, we increase the value of the property, which does two things. It gives us a higher appraisal, which is what we're getting a loan on anyway at the end of the day, but it also allows us to charge the most amount of rent possible. We're either getting market rent or I'd say 75% of the time we're setting a new market rent so because look at the inventory and look at the options, put yourself in the shoes of the renter. 
The renter could go rent something that's got five, six, seven year old cabinets and countertops, you know, or they could rent a property from us that's got brand new stuff in it. So they're going to be willing to pay a lot more. And they're also typically going to be willing to stay a lot longer. So being able to acquire assets with little to no money is awesome. But what's even cooler in my mind, Jay, is the ability to acquire assets that don't need a bunch of work right away. You know, most of the assets that we buy, we can essentially eliminate most of the big ticket items for at least the first five to seven years at a minimum. So that's what I love about this strategy.